Hey everybody, it's Vicky here and today I'm going to talk to you more about Hikate. Um, um, unfortunately my videos no longer have a introduction. Um, I had a bit of an issue with my computer and I lost everything. So I'm working off my new computer and this is Windows 8. Couldn't retrieve any of the data from my old one, any of my songs, any of my pictures which was a little bit heartbreaking because there were some um, memorable pictures on there but you've just got to overlook these things, there's worse things happening in the world and you've just got to get on with it so anyway I'm going to use my new webcam which I'm doing now and I'm going to tell you about Hikate now this is going to be Hikate in Egypt and North Africa Herodotus held the view that Hikate had come to Greece by way of cultics and that the Colicians themselves came from Egypt. On the basis of this, some academics believe that Hikate had her true origins in pre dynastic Egypt as the goddess Hekit, spelled H E K I T, and her um, or Hecat, or Hequit, um, all of which translate to mean the great magician. Hekit was depicted as a female figure with a frog's head and is often referred to in modern texts as the frog goddess. Aside from the similarity in their names, both Hecate and Hekit also shared the title of divine midwife. Hekit called this because the Egyptians believed that she aided in the rebirth of the sun each day. As the daughter of the god Re, Hekit was also known as the mother of the gods and alternately as the Eye of Re. Eye of Re. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, it's spelled R E. Her worship was not confined solely to Egypt but also occurred among their southern neighbours, the Nubians and among the people of the Sudan. In Hagati's case, her title as Divine Midwife came after assisting a woman in labour. Greek legend tells us that after helping the woman that she was considered by the fellow gods to be impure from her contact with the birth blood and was immediately cast into the river Akarin which I'm probably pronouncing wrong because I always do so I'm sorry about that <coughs> in order to cleanse her the tale goes on to tell us that this fabled river carried Hikate downstream into Tartarus subsequently linking her with the underworld itself certainly there is a relationship between um, Hikate and Hikit worth considering although the issue as to which goddess came first leaves still much room for argument while a controversial view is that the Greeks were influenced by the Egyptians some historians have suggested the radical idea that the Egyptians and their religion was in fact influenced through their contact with the um, Thracians and other people and not the other way round. However, since no culture is ever completely insulated from others, it is also is it also is equally possible that cultural influences went both ways at various times, in what amounts to an evolving exchange of religious ideas and symbolisms. Regardless of which theory is true, what it is certain is that if Hakate and Hecate do in fact share common lineage, then by extension the influence of Hakate as Hikit would extend well into North Africa and possibly even deeper into deeper into the continent, which um, interesting historical and cultural possibilities. Another link with Hakate and ancient Egypt arises around the symbol of the lion. In some classical depictions from Asia, um, Hikate is seen accompanied by lions, or has a lion's head. In fact, many modern sources list the lion as an animal that is sacred to her. However, in Egypt's religion, the lion is also 
the symbol of the goddess um, Sikhmat and the two goddesses share enough in common to raise a suspicion to speculation that a relationship potentially exists here as well. Both Sikhmat and Hikate are classified by modern pagans as dark goddesses. Sikhmat being the goddess of war and Hikate the goddess of witches, although Hikate also has some links with warfare through her participation in the battle with the titans for domination of the, um, the cosmos. Sikhmat and Hikate are also both considered to be protective figures, with Sikhmat guarding the Barona Sorry. With Sikhmat guarding the Pharaoh during battle and Hikate protecting travellers in general, and both goddesses are considered to be much older than their representative Pythians. Hikate is referred to as being born before the beginning of time itself, and Sikhmat is titled the one who was before the gods. These shared names and symbols, while, while certainly not conclusive, do at least raise the strong possibility that both goddesses share a common cultural heritage. Certainly the matter and the wider issues it, it raises with regards to historical development of Egyptian religion and that of the Mediterranean belief system has interesting possibilities indeed. Um, my reading's terrible sometimes when it comes to pronouncing words I'm not sure of, so I do apologise about that. If you do want me to type out anything I read to you, please just ask, because I'm happy to do that. There's no trouble with that at all. Um, if you've got any questions on Hikate, please feel free to send me a message and I'll happily answer them. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and bless it be.